folks, my name is Ben Kimby. I'm here in my tiny home, and I'm here with my LG WM3997HWA. I have no idea if you'll be able to read that. But, um, it is a really cool washing machine, a washer-dryer combo, 4.3 cubic uh, feet. I really like it a lot, a lot of great features, but uh, my pump wasn't working, it wasn't emptying out water. A uh, thing I'll note later in the video and uh, is that you can actually manually drain it so like say if your pump goes out part way through a load or something like that and you have a bunch of wet laundry in there manually drain it and you can run a drain and spin you're gonna have to keep on trading out a you know unless you have a gigantic pan or sitting right next to a shower or something you can drain into um, you're gonna have to keep on you know changing that out and everything so use something that won't spill when you move it but uh, just a note, because nobody else said anything about that and, and any other thing that I saw. And that is very helpful, rather than having to deal with all that wet laundry, to at least get it, you know, spun out enough that you can get it out of there. Um, and you can, I mean, you can still run a dry cycle, actually, too. Uh, it, it will drain out the same way. You just have to, you could attach another, well, I get into that later in the video. I'm, where I'm going to start out is, uh, so this has to do with the pump. Um, where I'm going to start out is the removal of the pump itself, not getting to that point. Uh, I go over how you get to that point later in the video when I'm going over how to reassemble it. Uh, I think there's a lot of videos out there covering the disassembly on these LG machines because all the washers are very, very similar, the front load washers, to this in all other aspects except when you get to the pump itself. So, um, that's my cat buddy. I was very unhappy that I've been doing a video and playing with my washing machine trying to get it working rather than paying attention to him. So, I'm going to go ahead and go on to that next part, and I hope it's helpful to you. Well, actually, I felt in there, and I can feel, because you actually have two pumps on this, over there and over there, as opposed to... Otherwise, it's very similar in a lot of ways to most of the LG washing machines, as far as how it's put together. And I can feel that there's definitely like some hair there in the pump. Um, and it has stopped pumping. So there's a good chance it may have burned out the motor, but I wanted to get the pump out and uh, take a look and see if I could get out of there. But I wanted to show people because uh, a lot of the instructions that are out there for the washing machines will work generally for this, except for like, you know, up here, I mean, the panel of one, you don't have to remove the electric because you can just set it up there, obviously, when I'm unplugged and all that. Um, and instead of six screws across the top here that hold this one panel on there's uh or instead of five there's six but the big difference is all the other things will show you ah and then you just remove these phillips screws that would be right here but of course there aren't any phillips screws what there are is these bolts which are in a spot right about here where my finger is another spot here and another spot back here that i've seen so far anyways um i'm gonna try pulling this out yet we'll see what other adventures there are that lie in store but um, and they come out pretty easily. You will want a ratchet set. I have, luckily I have this, which is meant for this kind of tight space stuff. Um, yes, they're 10 millimeter, by the way, save you a little searching, uh, <laughs> figuring that out. But, um, yeah, so next I'm going to try pulling this out and see if there's anything else securing it, which I have not done yet. Uh, first I'm going to want to remove the hoses off, so. After checking this out, the only other thing holding the pump assemblies and the pumps in is wires. So, of course, I'm going to go through and plug the wires. I'm going to note as I'm doing this that we have, oh gosh, so many lovely wires. So, we have brown and black coming over here with brown on top, black on the bottom. So, we have blue and black coming over here with blue on the top and black on the bottom. So, if you always remember, black is on the bottom. Remember, blue is right and brown is left. It'll probably be okay. So I'm going to try and remove all these, and then I'm going to try and bring the pump out actually this way because I think this is the only place where it's going to fit through so that I can pull the pump off the assembly and hopefully unclog that, see if I can save the pump or not. I have this out here. Obviously, you're going to want something to, like, catch water. Uh, probably still going to get myself wet. So we got one screw here holding the protective cover, like on the washer one. Another screw there. Another screw back down here. Um... Uh, I actually I left the drain hose on there because I don't think that's really something I need to pull off for what I'm doing. Um, and it, it, frankly, even if you're just completely replacing the pump, you could leave the drain hose in place and just feed it back through, or you know however you want to do it. Um, 
think it's an unnecessary step to take that off. I think a lot of the stuff out there is unnecessary step. So I have this tab here. I'm going to pry that up to pull this off once I have uh, the motor removed from the assembly. I've seen from washing machines, I had these, this held on with those clips. That white part is actually part of the motor. You just have to, what holds this onto the motor basically is that screw, and then this fits over. So you just need to pull this part off, um, and now you're down to your motor. Uh, and I'm going to see if I can get this unscrewed and get in there. The other thing, of course, is now, because I wasn't 100% sure, just because I couldn't find really reliable information on it, but there we got our part number now. Say 4681 Echo Alpha 2001 Tango. So there you go. This little piece down here is also held on by some Phillips head screws including one there in the front and two on the bottom. So I'm going to do that because otherwise this piece uh, prevents you from just pulling the pump off for some reason I have no idea why. So I could go and remove that. Oh, make that four screws. There's another one here on the back end. So. <laughs> so I got this apart and what I found in there was uh, Oh, it's still sitting there. Uh, this delightful and rather, uh, this is kind of a very severe, looks like it could just be a collection of hair or it was actually a hairball or something that was in one of the sheets or something that I didn't notice. Anyways, um, it was actually sitting up against one of these paddles when I pulled the motor out. I don't know if that's enough to have actually stopped it from working. So I'm going to like, you know, check under this. I can pull it out a little bit and just sort of look to see if there's any hair wrapped around there things like that. Unfortunately, I don't have anything that I could use to actually test the motor right now, just to see if it's working. I, I pulled these two apart, which, uh, I mean, you just press down on the, the black, or press out on the black tabs and pull this out. Um, and all that's holding it in there beyond that is just the strength of the magnet, obviously. And, I mean, this is spinning freely. I don't see any real issues with it. Um, I don't see anything wrong with this so hopefully this runs now because I don't think the motor's broken at all which means that uh, um, if it doesn't work check the soldering and stuff kind of take a look in there it's a little easier with the camera actually take a look at some of that kind of stuff um, if it doesn't work it's probably something electrical which is going to be a pain in the butt because that's more than just a motor. But, uh, yeah, I mean, everything on this seems fine. So maybe it was. Maybe that was something that was enough to actually stop the motor from running. Could be even a safety feature or something that if it encounters resistance to a certain level, it just stops trying. Um, but again, this feels fully intact. There's nothing wrong with the, uh, I can't think of the word, spindle or whatever. The metal piece that this actually spins on. Um, and it's spinning freely without, I mean, there's no resistance whatsoever. So put this back together and see if it runs. So just to note, um, one of the things I did while I have this out and I'm, you know, I'd fear it fully disassemble and make sure everything's clean. And I pulled this pump motor off and there was a little bit of gunk around it. Actually, you can see a little bit of spot right there. Um, and so that, you know, the cage, which I have... Let me set these right here so I don't lose them. The cage piece. I've been trying to keep everything together and then with the screws and so forth just so I don't lose anything. This this really, um, I think it's mainly meant for like grabbing coins and stuff. It doesn't stop a lot of other things. So like hair, lint and whatnot. I don't know. I might sort of contact the company and see if there's something you know, like a little insert that would help to also catch more of the lint and whatnot that I could just regularly check it and clean it out because I really don't want to be disassembling this regularly to remove clogs from the motor. Now the alternative is making sure that um, if there's some, I, I very much suspect that I washed a hairball through here that was on something. So you know just taking stuff out and shaking it off or whatever so that there's nothing like that might be something that I'm going to have to make sure I do in the future as well. So all right. Time to get that. I got like an hour and 15 minutes to do all this. So I'm going to try and get this all back together and see if I can actually get it to at least do a spin cycle so I can confirm if it's working or not. All right. So I got the pump motor back together. Um, things to note, this can slide onto the pump before or after you put the screws in, depending on the length of the screw thing you have. Um, 
but even, either way, you gotta get past that to get down to that one. Sort of canted back like that on there, although you can very clearly tell where the screws, screws went when you look on here and line them up, and it appears like they do little marks at each point too, probably during the manufacture process to make that go faster. I did discover, I was missing one of these. These appear to be some sort of a shock absorber, probably something to prevent uh, any shaking of either the pump from going through or shaking of the dry, uh, of the washer dryer from uh, being a problem for the pump. Uh, so, that, I mean, that's probably a good thing, right? Anyway, so it is possible for these to actually come off. Um, so that's kind of annoying. But I did find it, and it was just sitting in there. So now I just have to put this back on there. Four screws back in place. We'll run it back in there. Bring my little hose out of here. And then I will socket wrench these back down and uh, in through those into their proper place. Um, and attach, remember brown on top, black on the bottom. There's your left side and here's your right side. So anyways, I attach my hoses. I actually had this set like that so I wouldn't forget, but cold in the back, hot in the front. That one back there, you will want these get wide enough to work for it, um, but you will need a little wider than normal, uh, what you call it, uh, pliers or uh, something like a uh, channel lock, small channel lock or something like that type pliers in order to get a hold of that and put it back on or take it off in the first place. Just sitting back in there, one thing that is very helpful that I had noticed when I was pulling it out is that those little rubber feet for uh, the, anti, the, the shock absorption or whatever actually have little spots that they fit in. So, I mean, this just sets right back down where you need it. So, that's that's really nice. I was worried about having to mess around with that. And I just have to run this wire. It goes up around the housing. There's a couple places where it sort of locks in and then in there. Um, and I'm going to do that before I secure the pump down just because it's going to be a lot easier that way. So. One more thing, because uh, a lot of the videos I've seen the people do with the washers, the way that they uh, disassemble these is, frankly, completely bass backwards I don't understand it um, so I'm going to talk that through in reverse a little bit so right now at this point with the pump back in I'm ready to put on the front again so I'm going to do that next and I'm just going to basically I did uh, like a lot of people talk about um, disconnect this uh, this over here the lock from there instead of trying to unscrew it uh, last time when paying attention, I just unscrewed it first before I you know, got a little head of the instructions. And uh, yeah, this is much simpler and also obviously that way it keeps the door closed when you're doing this. Uh, moving around and everything. Um, so I'm going to bring this over here. And I am going to just lean over here and put this through there so I don't smash it. Lift up. You got your three points on your three points. Lift up, put this on those. Okay. Can I do it one-handed? I can do it one-handed. Somebody called them hinges, but whatever. I mean, it's easier to do this with that completely off, obviously. And then this will plug into there. Um, and then I will close this up. I will go and put the six screws that go one, two, three, four, five, six across here to hold this shut. I got a couple screws in. That doesn't seem to be making it any more difficult to get this out around here. Although it does have its pains to it and annoyances. It's a little bit around the top kind of tight, but it's just from... Uh... So, first of all, you just sort of flap this back and let it fall into that groove. And you can get this all the way on. And once I get the screws in, we'll get to that last part, which is that metal washer, which very few people talk about, I've noticed. Um, or not washer, the metal piece with the spring-loaded metal piece that holds this in place. Um, and if you've already gotten to that point yourself and try putting it on, then you know it's really, really freaking annoying. Um, it's gonna become my starting point here where I'm gonna have to go, uh, completely two-handed and I won't be able to let go or else I will fail. Um, it goes as it did last night and this could take the entire remaining time I have until I need to leave. But basically my implements of destruction butter knife what i'm going to do and here's where it gets fun and exciting is i'm going to 
uh, I get it, this in and as much of the spring as I can in and then I'm going to jam this into this piece and get a good grip and I'm going to actually jam it up in there so that I have a really good grip. Um, more than just a grip that this is actually sort of hooked into it. I'm going to have to end up having to hold it high to get the force that I want and there might be a, a you know a shorter pair of these are just the ones that I have. A shorter pair of pliers might work easier. Um, and then I'm going to pull it and see if I can do this uh, for demonstration. Yeah. So you get it down like that and then you can pull like that without doing what if you've tried this on your own you find that you keep on doing as you do this thing is that it's going to start pulling the rubber with it and that's going to flip off and then you have to put the rubber back and put the thing back and all that. Anyways, and now actually this has already come undone up to there. So then I'm going to just slowly with my fingers start prying that in while holding this and trying to hold the spring out as far as I can. And then once I get down towards the end, that's when I'm going to take the butter knife and I think I'm going to step the whole thing off of here. Um, I'm going to take the butter knife and I'm basically just going to go around and use it to slowly, slowly, slowly force that in and over the rubber. Um, and it, that was what ultimately worked for me best last night. I spent a good like three hours, if not more, not more, trying to get this damn thing back on here and failing repeatedly trying to grab with two pairs of like pliers see how far you could pull it doing all kinds of stuff and it's just it's a super super tight fit definitely does not go on as easy as it does in some of the videos um and again that's something that just maybe over time they put tighter versions on here or whatever but so show you that guys uh i would love to love to film how this goes so you know, i might turn on uh sort of selfie view aim it at me and see see how much you can pick up from that oh. Yeah, it's still recording. So, so a little way behind it. Sh that should show you the the area of importance. And uh, just a heads up, I'm gonna start somewhere in this area, editing things out, so that uh, you only see my success and not my incredible, incredible and epic failures, because there will be some of those. All right. So, out of camera view, I'm starting to put this in and get it into the groove okay so part of this too if you see this you want to cant this like this so that you get a good grip on there and i actually use my uh leg or foot to kind of help hold that in place and then pull down on here and get a lot better result as far as what you're getting for a grip and i think i'm about at the point i'm gonna have to start using the butter knife up here to get this oh wow Okay, and now I might stretch out some because this is going in so much easier. Don't at any point start rushing. Don't, you know, don't anticipate victory too early. Um, all right, so I got everything down. I can't believe that went that smoothly. Be very careful that I don't knock that out. I'm going to take the butter knife again. And what I'm trying to do is get the tip of the butter knife actually under that metal edge to make sure that this is going in there. And here, now I'm going to start having issues. Um, very, very easy place to lose your patience and try to hurry too much. Slowly prying that over. And there we go. I cannot believe that that went that smoothly. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, that was fantastic that that just worked out like that. As I discussed earlier, I kept all of this stuff together as a single unit just so that, um, you know, this can go back in any time, really. Line it up. And then spins to screw back in there. First one is this sheet metal screw. It's going to go in there. I will need two hands for this. And then after that, the long one, you can tell this one goes on there because it's painted white. So, yeah. Anyways. Alright, so we'll go to the next step after this. So, sheet metal screw, this screw. Put that all back together. Snap your door back in place. When you take it apart, or even when you're draining, this door just comes right off very, so that's nice. Uh, anyways, all right, we'll see. There we are with that. And by the way, one of these things right here, and I mean, you could even fit one of these on the end of a conventional screwdriver type thing. Um, this does make life a lot easier for one-handed handed driving, since it holds the screw. All right, so there's that. It is all together. 
and closed up. Then our next piece that get a little bit interesting is this, which uh, I think I probably mentioned. I just find that you know there's enough room in these cables to just set this on top. Obviously, if you then shake the machine around a lot, it's going to fall off, put stress on your cables. Don't do that. Um, so on this, just as when you're disassembling it, it's held in place by both a single screw. You do not need to remove multiple screws. And it both, it has these clips right here, like that, one, one, two, these two. Here you're pressing, sorry about that. These two uh, over here and over here, you're pressing down um, when you remove it. Then this third one over here, um, you're actually, my finger there so I'm doing this upside down this one actually presses up when you're moving but it also clips on along the top in a couple places you can sort of see those so you're gonna snap that back in place and make sure that it snaps back in place all across and it is all right so that's done so then there's one screw that you either remove when you're taking apart or it goes back in here these screws unlike somebody said with one of the washer videos these screws, there's no reason to take those out. Just take out the one screw. All right, with that, we now come to our detergent dispenser drawer. When you're pulling this out, uh, that push thing that you're like, why do I need that on the liquid beach? Bleach, if you're like me at all. Um, that is when you go to remove it, push down on this, and that allows you to pull this out. Now, I put my screws down in here so I wouldn't lose them and I would remember which part they go to. I'm gonna grab my two screws out of there and whether you're putting it in or taking it out, once you are done, um, well actually before you put it back in, these screws go in these two points right here or come out of there depending what you're doing. Right. Okay, now we come to the last and final part, the cat sitting contentedly on the floor. I'm kidding, he's not content at all. He thinks it's some bullshit that I'm doing all this stuff not paying attention to him. Um, Barton my wiring. <clears throat> it's probably not the first or last on the video so far. So, be careful not to hit your cat with the top of the washer dryer. That's very, very important. They will not like that. So this is on the back end. And this piece, I'm going to set up here with two hands so I don't smash something. This piece is your top piece. And it just uh, slides on and off like that. And then in the back, you have these bottom screws. If you like to point out, you don't need to remove the top screws. You can if you want, it doesn't really matter. But all you do have to remove is the bottom screws on each of these. And once I have these screws in, that'll be basically it. Um, and now plug it back in. Now before I go, if you do not have a level or own a level, get yourself a level and actually level this machine. Like you can see, this is not level enough. I have to get it to a better level than this. Um, which is a pain in the butt and it's annoying. Uh, this, this is where I had it before, but I had to move the machine out to work on it. And now it's at a level because, you know, just messing around, moving around, moves the feet around a little bit and everything. So I'm going to have to get down there, which especially the way that I have it here in my tiny home, big pain in the butt to adjust those, but do it. It is worth it. This machine is made to run perfectly level and I mean perfectly level. And if you get it perfectly level, it will run amazingly and it won't shake your whole house and it's gonna be, you know, it's a great machine. And if you don't get it perfectly level, you're gonna have problems and probably even create new problems and maybe even break the thing. So don't be lazy, just take the time to set it up correctly rather than then setting it up incorrectly and going on Amazon or Lowe's or whatever and leaving a bunch of nasty comments about how LG makes a horrible machine because you were too lazy to set it up right. All right, that's just, that's my final two cents. Talk to you later.